logical editor in Cubase can be the most flexible, surgical, but also the most intimidating editor for working with your MIDI information. But once you kind of get a handle of it, you can do very powerful things. So let's take a look at some different examples of the logical editor in action to give you an idea of some of its capabilities. Now, sometimes people, when you go to the MIDI menu, are intimidating first because the logical editor sometimes isn't available. And that's because there isn't an event selected for it to do logical editing on. So as soon as you have an actively selected MIDI event, the logical editor will become available. Now, the logical editor is kind of broken down into three areas. And we could think of it as what function we want to do at the bottom, whether it's delete, transform, insert, copy, extract, select. We have a filter target, and this defines what MIDI condition or parameters will be affected, and the action target will allow us to change those values that are defined. All right, so it sounds complicated, but let's take a look at some different examples. Let's look at this, um, listen to this little cello part. So kind of interesting musically, but the velocities are a little boring, uh, and we can make it more interesting by changing the velocities. So what I want to do is to, let's say, randomize the velocities between different values. So we're gonna, define our filter target here of events that are equal to note. And now what we want to do is a MIDI note message and different MIDI messages will have a value one, a value two, value three. So a MIDI note message, value one is pitch, value two is down velocity. So we're gonna say I wanna take all my notes and I want it to take my value two and I could add, subtract, divide. I'm going to just say set random values between 45, and I'll hit tab, and 125. So I hit enter, and now when I hit apply, it'll just randomize all the velocities of the notes. And I'll make it a little more interesting musically. So I'll hit I'll just undo that, Command or Control Z. And let's say I wanted to set up a different condition. So our lowest note here is D sharp one. Let's say I wanted to randomize the velocities of every note except D sharp one. So I'm gonna go to my filter target and we're gonna say value one is unequal to D sharp one. So now every note that isn't D sharp one will be randomized between these values. So let's say if we had a part and I wanted to do something even a little more interesting where we just randomized the velocities of every couple of notes. So I wanted to have almost like every third note. So I'm gonna add a different condition here and we'll choose last event, and under the condition, we're gonna choose every other event, and then we're gonna do our event counter, and I'll just type in three. So now every other third note will have its velocity randomized. So you can do stuff like that for hi-hats, it could be really handy for emphasizing more downbeat. So if you want to set up an interesting metronomic feel, very simple to do. And these can all be saved as presets, which can be triggered from keyboard shortcuts as well. Let's look at a different part here. So let's say we have like a pad with some chords. And I'll just kind of zoom in here so you can see it a little better. So now when we listen to it, So let's say I wanted to take the lowest note of each of those chords and copy it down an octave. So what I want to do under the function is choose insert. So we're gonna define our type is equal to MIDI notes. And then 
for an additional filter target, we're going to select context variable and we say notes that are equal to, and we'll say the lowest uh, position in the chord. So we'll say, so zero would be the lowest, one would be the middle part, two would be the next voice, etc. What we want to do with the pitch is now I want to transform that and we're going to say value one, the pitch. Let's subtract. So we're going to take our MIDI notes. We're going to subtract by 12. And let's go ahead and hit apply. It's automatically copied and created the notes down an octave. Now let's say if I wanted to even take that a step further, we could add a different condition here. And we could say, value two, the velocity, I wanted to add 20. We'll do 22. All right, so now I'll just hit apply. Those lower notes have an increased velocity. So now there's also some really handy drum editing that we could do as well. So let's take a look at our drum editor that we have this open. And this is where I first really learned the logical editor because I had done an album project a long time ago where we used electronic drums, but we had real cymbals. It was back before cymbal samples were any good. Every time that the drummer went to his ride cymbal, it sent a false trigger to the tom pad below it. So let's say if I have this like a false trigger here on G1 triggered erroneously, it could be just a, a false trigger itself. Um, and we wanted to delete that. So what I set up a condition was, I said, okay, type is gonna be equal to note, value one, is going to be equal to, let's say, G1. And we're going to set up our condition that the velocity, value 2, is lower or less than 50. We're going to choose to delete those events. And at this point, we hit apply, and it will just take and delete every note that meets that particular condition. I also get kind of uh, people wanting to do extraction of MIDI notes quite easily. And so let's say if I want to take my kick drum, which is on C1, and take it out of this track and put it into another one, what I would do is just choose to extract, and we can say notes that the value one of pitch is equal to C1. And now you can see my kick drum here, and I'll hit apply, and that's gonna be extracted out of the part. And when we kind of scroll down here, we can see our kick drum automatically placed on its own track directly on there. Something else that you could do for drum editing that's also very handy is when we wanted to define different conditions, I'll just undo that. And let's say I wanted to, let's listen to our drum part here. So let's say in this case, the snare drum I wanted to quantize, but only on the main beats that are around uh, beat four. So if we kind of zoom in here, we can see that as we do this, you know, I don't want to affect the rhythmic placement of the other snares because they're kind of free and I want that human feel. But I want beat four to actually be very precisely and quantized for just the snare. So let's set up a condition where we can select all of the events that meet that condition. So I want to say we want to select notes where the pitch value one is equal to 
D1. And then we're going to add a position with that. So we're going to say the position, and we're going to say inside bar range. And we get a little graphic here. And I'm just going to position that around beat four. So I'll just draw it in like so. What I want to do is to select all of those D1s around beat four of the bar. So I'm going to select those. So I hit apply. It's automatically gone there. And now when I hit Q for quantize, only the notes around beat four will be quantized. So if we undo that again, so if we look around beat four and none of the other notes will be affected. There's also very macro elements of different parts that you want to do in Cubase as well. So let's say if I have a part here and let's say if I added a controller lane. Now sometimes you might have extraneous controllers uh, inside of a MIDI part. It could be like the old days certain MIDI controllers would spit out aftertouch. And you may not notice that until you actually go into a list editor. So let's say we have a lot of pitch bend and aftertouch information here. So if I wanted to delete all of the aftertouch, which is unintentional, but just kind of spit out by like an older MIDI controller, I could say we're going to say type is equal to aftertouch. And now at this point I could hit apply and we go to check in our list editor and boom, all of our aftertouch has been deleted. Now we can also extract different components. So if I say, let's extract the events that are equal to pitch bend here. So at this point we could just say pitch bend. And just like we did with our kick drum earlier, I could hit apply. And now we could just simply scroll down here and this will just be our pitch bend data. Something else that you could do is if you have different types of controllers, you could also, let's say perhaps if you said, oh, you know, this I recorded modulation and I wanted it to be expression instead. So what we could do is I wanted to transform and we're going to say our type event is equal to a controller. Now value one of the controller would be the controller message, the controller number. So here I wanted it to be, let's say, our MIDI controller one. And then on our action target, we could say value one. And let's say I want to take that modulation and turn it into expression. And here at this point, I'm just going to add 10 because our expression is controller 11. So now at this point, I'm going to take all of the modulation and apply it to expression. So these are just a handful of the things that you can do with the logical editor. Once you kind of build up your presets and get to grips with how the editor works, you can do very macro level editing in a very surgical manner with just one or two mouse clicks. And a great way to get started is to actually, you know, play around with kind of the factory presets. And there's a lot there that you can kind of backward engineer. But I think once you start using it, you'll see how powerful it is and it can really speed up your workflow in Cubase. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.